Coronavirus hospitalizations and deaths are rising yet again in the United States. The new wave of infections comes as millions of people plan to spend time together during the holidays. The virus is crushing New York again. The state set single-day records for positive cases two days in a row. People are waiting for hours in lines to get tested. Health officials say the Delta variant is still causing the vast majority of new cases, but Omicron is spreading rapidly. Fears about the new strain are causing disruptions and closures across the country, reminiscent of the early days of the pandemic. New York's iconic Radio City Rockettes will not perform their Christmas spectacular following an outbreak. The remainder of their season has been canceled. The sports world is also hard hit. The NFL, NHL and college basketball are postponing or canceling games. And restaurants are closing their doors as staff members test positive. President Biden is expected to address the nation on the threat of the Omicron variant on Tuesday. CBS News national correspondent Mark Strassman has more. Omicron's alarm bells ring out across America in California. When I look around the corner ahead, what I see is a deluge of Omicron. Ohio. People are gathering together. Our medical personnel have just been slammed. All of this constitutes this perfect storm. And especially New York. I believe it's going to get even stronger and more virulent, and we are in for a, a rough ride this winter season. New Yorkers stampede for testing. COVID cases nearly doubled in one week. Twice this week, the state set the highest single-day count of new cases since the pandemic's early months. I feel like everyone has COVID. <laughs> and I'm just trying to be safe, you know. This week has been crazy. Two years into the virus, America's seeing a run on testing once again. We're left to make our own COVID calculus, evaluating personal risk and exposure moment to moment. America's bruising from a one-two punch, Delta and Omicron, the newest variant about to become dominant. Its severity unclear, its contagiousness overt. Cases more than double every few days. Experts warn about a potential tsunami of sickness. For unvaccinated, we are looking at a winter of severe illness and death for unvaccinated. For themselves, their families, and the hospital, they'll soon overwhelm. Another milestone in mourning. Bells tolled Thursday for 800,000 Americans dead from the virus. That's almost the population of San Francisco. Roughly 1,200 Americans still die daily from the virus. Today was pretty hard because it's my third one this week. One of many American hospitals buckling under caseloads. The NFL is reeling from a blindside blitz of outbreaks. Three of this weekend's games postponed for a couple of days. The NBA, the NHL, and the NCAA are also playing defense to keep COVID from spreading. Multiply that risk of community spread on college campuses. On many, COVID has exploded again, just in time for the holidays, as infected students head home for winter break. With Christmas next weekend, more than 100 million of us will travel at least 50 miles over the next few days. So many people are sick from COVID. Everyone is sick of COVID. And Home for the Holidays has an irresistible appeal, but an undeniable risk. Lana? Mark, thank you. Dr. Cedric Dark, assistant professor of emergency medicine at Baylor University and founder and executive editor of Policy Prescriptions, Dr. Dark, welcome. You know, it has to sound to people so disheartening that these numbers are back up. And as my colleague Mark Strassman just reported, more than 100 million Americans are expected to travel at least 50 miles in the next two weeks. How much might this holiday travel further the spread? Well, thank you for having me, uh, first of all. And I think many of my colleagues in emergency rooms, ICUs, and elsewhere in the healthcare field are worried about people traveling especially amid what will probably be the next surge. Um, but again, if you, if you are going to travel, at least try to do it in the safest way possible. Keep your bubble small. Make mm -hmm. sure that everyone that you are meeting up with, if you can at all possibility, try to test the day before you meet up or the day of meeting up so that if someone does test positive, you can exclude them from those events and reduce the risk of spreading it to people that you haven't seen in several weeks or months. So the recommendation is not to cancel travel plans, it's to be smart about the travel plans. Is that right? 
Why I think sometimes being smart about their travel plans could mean canceling those plans. So for instance, there were several holiday parties that were taking place this week. I opted not to go to any uh, of those that were indoors because I think the risk of it is just too high. I think if you're going to do something, Mm -hmm. you need to do it in an educated manner. Uh, and, And that means number one, requiring that everyone in attendance is vaccinated. Um, if you can, make sure that everyone tests before it actually happens and keep those events outdoors, if at all possible. So uh, how much of the current outbreak in the U.S. is attributable to Delta versus Omicron? That's a really difficult thing to figure out. Number one, we don't when people come into our emergency room, we don't test them for Delta versus Omicron. We test them for COVID. Um, and so it doesn't matter to me what the variant is. We're going to have more variants after this. What matters to me is whether or not you have COVID. And the only way for you to stop having COVID or stop catching it, reduce your risk, is to, one, analyze your own risk tolerance, and number two, layered mitigation. And what that means, quite simply, is wear a mask when you're uh, in crowds. But first of all, avoid crowds altogether get vaccinated, get boosted. And that's the simple stuff that you have control of to keep yourself and your family safe. And you you just mentioned uh, the importance of getting boosted. The CDC recommends everyone get a booster shot six months after their original vaccination. But only one in six Americans have gotten boosted so far. Have you heard resistance from patients who were otherwise fully vaccinated to getting that booster? Quite frankly, the patients that I've seen that are vaccinated have already gone out and get the, gotten boosted. Those people that were a little hesitant are actually people like myself, folks that looked at the information early on and made that calculus that some of the early data didn't necessarily support it. Now, looking at more data as it's come in over the past several weeks to months, many of my colleagues that made that initial decision to delay getting boosters, we're all getting those boosters now. And uh, speaking of the data, early data shows Pfizer and Moderna vaccines provide strong protection against Omicron, uh, particularly if you have been boosted. But still, only about 62 percent of Americans are fully vaccinated. I'm wondering, with this latest surge, Dr. Dark, do you expect that that number will increase? I hope that it will. I I think the thing is, um, people that were on the fence about getting boosted should follow the lead follow my lead. Go ahead and get boosted. I'm planning on getting mine as soon as I possibly can. And for those of you that haven't gotten gotten vaccinated yet, you have to realize that vaccination is the best thing you can do to divorce the prospect of death and severe disability from, um, from actually getting a case of COVID. So I think when people think about it, that's the main thing that we need to do. And, and there are many people that are resistant to getting vaccinated in the first place. Right. They're worried about safety concerns. Let me give them a simple reminder. Over four billion people on this planet have received some form of covid vaccine in the past few months to a year. And quite frankly, I've yet to see one zombie walking around. OK. And I think a lot of people were worried about these hypothetical uh, concerns. And we've seen some real concerns, you know, but I think when you validate that risk versus benefit, the benefit of getting vaccinated far outweighs the risks for most people. Now, you may have an individual issue. Talk to your personal physician about that to see if it's right for you. But otherwise, if you're just um, someone that's concerned, I think that it's safe to say that these vaccines are safe. And just for a, a point of reference, when you think about it, there's a medicine that a lot of people around this planet take every single day that's far more dangerous uh, than than is a COVID vaccine. And that medicine is insulin, you know? And when you think about it, there's actually probably about a hundred times more people on the planet have taken a COVID vaccine and take insulin, which is a medicine that if dosed incorrectly could actually harm you. So in terms of safety, I I think the safety profile of these vaccines uh, is clear based on real world data that we have with half of the planet taking the vaccine. Four billion people, as you say, and hopefully for somebody who's maybe still on the fence, that will be the persuasion that they need. Dr. Cedric Dark, thank you for joining me and thank you for all that you do. Happy holidays.